Hello and welcome to Tainted Grail. This is the campaign mode. In previous episodes, I have covered a little bit of the conquest mode, but in some future ones, we'll probably go back to it. But for the moment, we're going to be trying out the narrative driven open world RPG section. This video is kindly sponsored by the developers. If you would like to check out the game, there is a link in the description. It has just released into early access. Let's start a new game. Kuenag is dying. Its barren fields provide little food, and its crumbling walls offer no protection. As the power of the Guardian men here fails, the weirdness creeps ever closer. Twisting places, creatures, and even space itself. Despite this, the people of the farmhold refuse to leave. Instead, Lord Yvain led four of their best on a desperate mission to Camelot. They promised to bring back help. They never returned. Now those left behind are growing desperate. They will try to bestow the burden of their fate on someone else. New heroes. With an even slimmer chance of success. All right, so here we are. We have a selection between two different characters here. Now, bear in mind that the world of Tainted Grail is a reimagining of Arthurian legends. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, then you probably want to check this out. Anyway, let's take a look here. As you can see, there is an important message down below. It basically says that both of these characters are pretty much the same gameplay-wise. However, if you would like to check out exactly what kind of differences they might have in the future, then you should definitely try out the conquest mode first. And in my previous video on Tainted Grail, I did cover all of the classes in a pretty, a pretty extensive amount. So you might want to check that out. Anyway, we're going to be playing as Bjor here, who is a local smith known for short temper and incredible strength. He does his best to conceal a festering, unhealable wound in his side that he received under mysterious circumstances. Not long ago, Effie's Ford supplied the southern lands with weapons and armor of quality comparable to arms crafted by masters of Camelot. Materials brought directly from the mines of forlorn swords, as well as Ephir's unrivaled knowledge, made his swords and shields particularly sought after. But with quality and renown came steep prices that not every soldier could pay out of pocket. You were the happiest person on this damned island when Ephir took you under his wing to teach you the basics of his craft. Now, the ruin of his house. The place where you spent countless hours hammering on the blacksmith's iron looms at the edge of the weirdness, rotting away, a shade of its former glory. Your hand touches the key in your pocket. Every day it feels a little heavier. Every day you wonder whether you will be able to force yourself to walk through that door again. Why would you even try to save his legacy after he found you insufficient? After he lied to you? After he left you behind like a broken tool? With hazy eyes and less than confident hands, you open the door. Maybe that last ale wasn't a good idea. Maybe it was. The fact is that now you're drunk out of your mind. But as you sit near a large workbench, you notice a piece of parchment on the floor under it. That damned letter. You've read it a thousand times by now. You've tried to burn it a thousand times more. In this short note, your master explains the reason why Yvain did not take you on his quest. The young lord of Kuanact believed you too reckless and he saw your wound as a liability. However, he tries to convince you that should their expedition fail, you might be the only hope Kuanact has to survive. It's not like you believe a single word he wrote. You thought burning the letter would bring you some comfort, a 
at the same time, you knew it wouldn't. It was high time to get rid of it, though. Even if to force yourself never to think about it again. Drunk as you are, it's not easy to start working at the forge. But you're way past sleeping it off. Kuanakt is dying. And everyone who didn't leave by now is going down with it. Hours pass. And from your drunken haze emerges a surprisingly acceptable weapon. It's not nearly as perfect as Ephir's masterpieces. But you never expected to reach the heights of his craft. Not to mention the fact you've lost access to materials from the mines of forlorn swords. Everything you have on hand are leftovers from the good days. After you've done, you collapse from exhaustion. You wake as the sun sets. Usually, by this time, you'd already be on your way to the inn. You might be able to force yourself to get some work done before you leave, though. The wound in your side suddenly throbs, and you punch it in response. Pain and rage overwhelming you for a moment. Only then you notice one of the farmhold's guardians standing in front of you, his mouth agape. We, oui, I am sorry, but it's your turn to lay an offering. Godforsaken offering. It was not your turn today, and even if it were, you know the truth. The men here's protection won't last. Oblivion stretches its cold hands towards Kuanakt Farmhold, after claiming many other parts of Avalon. Your question takes him aback. An offering to our guardian, Minir. Have you been outside? The weirdness is close now, and Farmhold's ledger says you're next. Please, don't cause any trouble. Time passes. Your wound throbs again, as if something was trying to rip free and join the rolling clouds of weirdness outside. Sitting here any longer would be a torture. Well, welcome to the land of Tainted Grail. And uh, yeah, we can move around. We can move around with WSD. You can, uh, you can click, you can do whatever you want to do. And there are a wide variety of different people and places that we can speak to and interact with and uh, i'm actually going to be making an offering here towers above you weathered and cracked its ribbons flapping in the wind the thought that this tired old thing is the only protection from pure weirdness outside a farmhold sends shivers up your spine men his, raised by merlin himself in the age of conquest are said to have different appetites. The one before you seems to best respond to fresh blood, and its thirst is not easy to quench. The men here can be sated with animal blood, just as easily as with human offering. Unfortunately, livestock is now scarce and very expensive. You will need to hunt down some wild creature and drag it back to this place. The thought of chasing prey on the edge of weirdness makes you anxious. Your eyes slide past the Kuanak's prison brock. Maybe there is another, safer way to appease the men here. Ooh, aha. Uh -huh. So that is giving us an idea. It is giving us a, uh, shall we say, an option. And I wonder whether I can use a prisoner's blood or whether I can find a wild animal. All right, so I uh, I guess I'm just going to go into our first fight. Why not? Now, personally, I very much enjoy the combat in Tainted Grail. I think I like it basically the same in the campaign mode as well as in the conquest mode, but obviously the conquest mode does have a little bit more selection, a little bit more variety in the decks that you can use. In the uh, campaign mode, you're going to be playing with the Brawler as you can see right here. And the Brawler has a unique ability, as well as the other two classes, they all have unique abilities known as runes. And this rune right here, 
allows you to deal marks. Basically, you, you can put combo marks on the opponent whenever you deal damage. So let, let's, uh, let me actually just show you that. So boom, there you go. So that is one mark. And you can see here that if we get six combo marks, it will make the enemy vulnerable. And the same thing with the amount of marks being on an enemy, it will charge your rune up. So as you can see, every time you hit an enemy, you gain one charge to your rune. And the more charges you have, the more damage you are able to deal with the activatable portion of your rune. And the other classes, as I have mentioned in the conquest mode, they also have very unique playstyles and their runes reflect those kinds of playstyles. The Guardian, for example, is all to do with drawing cards and much more defensive gameplay. The Brawler is about being offensive, but not too, not too reckless offense. And it's about stunning most of the time. And then the Berserker, which is the last rune, uh, is much more to do with offense, just pure, pure offense and taking massive amounts of damage, but then using your rune to life steal it all back. So there's a huge amount of different things to do. Okay, so I'm actually going to attack here because we can stun the wolf with our ability right there. And I'm going to do a little bit more damage. And then we'll go on to the next turn. And this is going to be a very easy victory for me indeed. Because as I said, I have played the conquest mode quite extensively and I feel like it is a much more challenging experience than these early fights in the campaign. So now we have a carcass and I can actually take it back to the men here. Are you ready to make a sacrifice? Yes, I am. You spill the blood at the foot of the statue. The cracked stones drink greedily. You feel the men here's power surging. Once again, the weirdness is pushed back. Once again, the land returned to Kuanakt is smaller than before, barely reaching past the furthest buildings of the farmhold. Bystanders disperse, and you sit down to catch your breath. Most of the people are now heading for the Mead Hall to raise a toast for yet another day Kuanakt bought itself with blood. All right, good to know, good to know. Okay, so we're also gaining experience, of course, and we're also gaining wealth. Wealth is the currency in uh, Tainted Grail. And we also have this. The broch is now quiet, save for dripping water echoing from its thick walls. Perhaps you should see about filling it again? Hmm, yes, good to know. Now there's a map, as you can see. And there are enemies on this map, infected humans. Ooh, okay, hello. Don't really want to be dealing with those guys, or do we? We probably do. Okay, well, we're gonna go into some additional battles here. As I say, I actually really enjoy the combat system in Tainted Grail, it feels very visceral it feels very satisfying when you're actually able to win a battle without taking any damage and it feels like your strategy really does make a big difference i also have an item here as you can see there's a, there are going to be some consumables that you will be able to utilize in combat as well as out of it and that's going to be very nice Ooh, executors what Exec executor's strike this does triple damage if the enemy is stunned what a crazy crazy thing unfortunately i do not have uh a stun ability at the moment which is really ah oh, that, uh, that's grinding my gears right there ah if only i had a stun ability that would be really fun okay so it's gonna do three three hits of zero to one damage well i don't really i don't really care about that too much do i but i guess i'll just take a should i just do damage to it i guess i'll just do damage to it and i can use my my charge actually boom ah almost almost i almost killed it with our charge there but no no cigar right there no cigar but we only took one damage so that's really not a big deal and we can just finish it off easily enough and i'm hoping that we're going to be leveling up soon as well because in the conquest mode when you level up you do get to select some new cards and I hope that we might get to do something about that in the campaign mode too. Okay, gives 10 experience points. I'm going to drink it. There we go. I'm going to drink it again. Why not? Let's just uh, drink as much experience as we can get our hands on. Okay, so these are two dogs this time around instead of just the one. So this is going to be a very much more um, challenging battle, even though, of course, the early battles are going to be relatively easy in comparison to what you would expect to find in the conquest mode. So if you're looking for a massive challenge, go for the conquest mode. And if you're looking for more of a narrative driven, relaxed experience, then the campaign is definitely for you. I'm gonna go for all in here, and then we're just gonna do massive damage. Wow, that was actually pretty good. 
Uh, I'm going to do Breathe, I think, because that's going to block one attack, and it is going to give me an additional energy, because as you can no doubt see down at the bottom right here, you have a certain limit of the amount of energy or the amount of cards that you can play per turn, and usually it's three. But as with the Guardian class in the Conquest mode, you can get more than that uh, with the use of the Guardian's rune. And as you see here, we also used a card that was able to give us significantly more here too. So I'm pretty happy with this. Ah, uh, almost, almost. Can we, get a, can we get lucky with the RNG? Yes, we can. Okay, very nice. So let's just use a little bit of block here. I'm going to just try and reduce as much damage as I'm, uh, as I'm going to take as much as we possibly can. Because believe it or not... Health is actually the most important thing in this game. It really is. Apart from wealth, of course, because you, you you do want to get new gear. You can actually make your character look extremely cool. And I'm hopeful that we'll be able to do that uh, as we progress forward. Because as you can see, I'm currently using a rusty hammer <laughs> and a butcher's apron. And these things, you can obviously use much better stuff as time goes on. Okay, so we also have some wealth here, as you can see. And we gained, uh, look at that, we gained a healing mixture, acid flask, and 16 wealth. We also have a uh, an infected human here. Okay. Uh, how much health do I have right now? 195. Uh, I could use one piece of food. There we go. And now we have 200 again, so that's pretty nice. So let's go into the next fight against this infected human and see what kind of abilities they're going to have because these guys, they're not only going to attack. Some some enemies will have debuffs. Some enemies will summon other enemies to fight you. Some enemies will sacrifice themselves in an, in an, in an attempt to summon really, really big opponents that are going to smack you around. But thankfully, this guy doesn't seem to be doing that. And he seems to just be preparing for a special attack, which is just as bad. So we're just going to do hard hit here just to get this guy damaged as soon as possible. And oh dear, I can stun him. Oh, he's immune to stun. Oh dear. Okay, I guess I'm just going to use that then. Yeah, as you can see, he actually sacrificed himself and he has now summoned these two enemies. If I had been able to kill him before... He was able to do this then he wouldn't have summoned these guys and then i would have had a much easier time but obviously i just didn't have as many offensive cards as i needed okay so i'm going to stun this one and then we are just going to do this there we go oh 76 damage triple damage when they're stunned it's super super good okay so i can either decide to attack i think i'm going to attack with small strikes twice rather than stand our ground. I don't think we need to stand our ground. I think we can probably end up with getting a kill here. Yeah, there we go. Nice, okay, that was that was a bit close. That was a bit close because if we had taken that 12 damage or however much damage that, that enemy was going to do, that was gonna be a pretty significant amount to take this early on. So, you know, you, you gotta play a little bit carefully, but even if you do make a mistake, the early game is going to be quite forgiving. So let's have a look. Double edge. Return damage from the next hit to the enemy performing it. That might actually be really cool, but that does rely on us actually taking the damage, and I, I do not want to take any damage whatsoever. So what I'm going to do, double pain is actually really cool too, by the way. Duplicate the next card played if I have four energy. So if you, if you think about this, let's say I play a stun. So let's say I stun something that is about to attack me, and then I play... Hmm... Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, so for, let's say I have four energy. So I, I play something that stuns, uh, you know, I, I use the uh, the stun card that I used in the previous battle just now. And then I play double pain. And then I play executor's strike. And that's going to duplicate the next card that has been played. In other words, then we have two executor strikes, which is pretty crazy. I'm actually going to be taking this because I think executor strike is crazy good. If you don't want to take any cards, then you can skip that particular card selection process and then gain an additional little bit of wealth which is pretty good but uh, yeah anyway duplicate every 10th attack card played that actually seems like a really good passive skill uh, cleaving add cleave to the brawler's ultimate mm, not a big fan of that to be honest I think it, it does have its place because there are a number of encounters that you're going to have where there are many, many enemies and you want to do as much damage to them as possible in the quickest amount of time possible. All Oh, wow. All vulnerable enemies receive 50% additional damage. That could be really, really powerful as well, especially with our mark. But I'm actually going to take physical training. I think that duplicating every 10th attack is really good in my opinion. Okay, so we have a blood sample here. 
Sample of blood extracted from a creature inhabiting grubwood. Okay, that's very pleasant, isn't it? Okay, so we took basically no damage, and we now have 210 health instead of 200, because we gained uh, 10 health from... Ooh, wait a minute. Yeah, we gained 10 health from doing uh, uh, doing the level-ups. Yes, getting the level-ups. Okay, so there is a bit of a problem here. If you don't know anything about Tainted Grail, then you'll see this uh, this blue mist kind of thing here. And that is the weirdness, which is what the narrator was talking about earlier. Weirdness basically makes it possible for you to be attacked and have much stronger enemies against you. So you do need to be a bit careful of that. Let's have a look at this, though. I would like to attack the infected human and have a look at what's going on at the druid's inhabitants right here. Oh, the druid's um, little little structure here. Okay, so... Mm, I was hopeful that we could probably kill this guy. Oh, we might be able to kill him. Let's stun him. Oh, he's a mute. You know, every single time, I don't look at this icon and I just kick myself. Ah, gobsmacked, really. I, I mean, I, I guess I shouldn't be so shocked because that's generally what I tend to do, but, you know. Uh, oh, well, never mind. Okay, so, yeah. This guy is just going to summon things and I'm not really going to be able to do anything because he is immune to stuns. So I guess I could just try to murder him as fast as I possibly can. But yeah, as you can see, I pro you know, I probably could have beaten him. I probably could have beaten him. Ah, oh, well, never mind. Ooh, cleave. This has cleave, actually. So I could theoretically... Okay, so what's 20% of this? Well, not that good, but we might be able to do quite some damage. Let's try it. Uh, this cleave. Boom. There we go. Okay, that actually did a pretty decent amount of damage. We're going to take quite a bit, but we do have a number of uh, pieces of food, so that should be all right. Now, bear in mind that these things are not immune to stun, so I should be able to eliminate them relatively easily. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on this guy over here first, and then we're just going to use block because this guy only attacks once. So we can just completely block all of his damage. Yeah, this, uh, this particular encounter did not go very well for me. I, I, made some, uh, I made some mistakes there, but it's okay. As I've said, early fights are going to be quite forgiving and you're not going to have too many difficulties dealing with them. And uh, who knows, you can probably do even better than me at this point. Okay, so let's have a look. You call out to the druid inside and give the scarred wooden door a push. Inside the clochan, the first thing you notice is a dense smell of rotting meat and human sweat. There's a man half laying on a bed in the corner looking barely conscious. His hands are trembling. The door closes behind you. Introduce yourself. You shake the man's body and after a while you see his eyes opening. He looks at you with an absent gaze. Suddenly, he sits up on his bed and shouts, I told you never to enter this place. Before you can answer, he looks at you again. Wait, who the hell are you? We need your help with our men here. I don't care. I see how it goes. What do you want in return for your help? Now that's smart. That's what I like to hear. I'll tell you what I want. I want to go back to Kuanacht and finally lay down in my own damn bed with enough mead and mushrooms to carry me over to the other side. In my own home, the home that was taken from me by your lord. One and only Yvain the dickhead. Okay, well, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> Just remember, my old house, my old bed, me inside, alone, no one bothering me, not now, not ever, save for the time when I run out of mead or drugs, and an apology from Yvain when you're at it. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon, because I don't know where he is, but anyway. You leave the druid's hut, still dizzy from the stench you felt inside. You look at the men, patiently waiting for the druid junkie to let them in. You got what you wanted from the warlock? I did. There is a chance to save my village. I'm happy for you. I'm glad you're trying to fight against the weirdness. He nods in your direction. Did the warlock say anything about us? He's lying to you. <laughs> he's going to see you soon. You see, he's relieved, just like his men. Thank you, Tony. Now we have hope, and there's more than anyone can ask for in these days. In these times, even. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, so we can actually go and join the villagers in the mead hall if we want to. And we found the druid, but you need to get his old home in order for him to help. Alright, good to know, good to know. Okay, so as you can no doubt tell, 
There are additional side quests all over the place, basically. All over the place. And you're going to be uh, required to uh, go and do those, I guess. Okay, so let's see. There's a drunk over here. Is he going to is he gonna attack me? Let's actually speak to him and see what he says. The smell of dirt, vomit, and ale mix in the air as you approach a man desperately trying to keep a standing position. He looks liable to empty his stomach on the ground outside the inn. You damned peasants, you damned fools. That's no way to treat a man of my stature. It's a travesty. Well, what happened? Disrespect happened. They threw me out, me. Treated like a dog or worse. You're accustomed to drunks in Kuanakt, and even being thrown out of the inn, you have done your fair share of stupid things since Master Airfear left town. But at least you had the decency to wash the day after. The smell wafting from this man is unbearable. Judging by his garb, he must have been an aristocrat, a lord of some kind. The armor he wears is of exceptional quality, quality most folk in Kuanakt can't afford. Calm down. Tell me what's going on. The man looks at you, trying to concentrate and pull through his drunken haze. As if you cared. You just want to use me like everyone else, to exploit me in the fact that my heart's too good for this world. He wipes his tears with a dirty robe. I need a drink. I need a damned drink, and I can't get one because I can't get inside. Okay, so it requires an alcoholic drink. I unfortunately do not have that at the moment, but I should be able to get one relatively easily if I can go into the inn. Though no travelers came through Kuanakt in weeks, the inn is far from quiet. With Mead Hall open only for certain occasions, it is the inn that lets people drink away their daily horrors. Okay, so ask for wares. So let's buy an alcoholic drink, shall we? I don't have any mead, unfortunately, because I drank it all, but I do have 43 wealth, and I should be able to buy it from this guy. Ooh, he's got a cool mace. Look at that. This mace was used by the innkeeper of Kuranakt in countless brawls. Always ready to pacify whoever was causing trouble. It does 14 to 17 damage. What a crazy amount of damage that is. Okay, so we're just going to buy some of this. And we could also sell some other stuff. Uh, we can sell some of this, I guess. How much money does this guy have? It doesn't seem to say, I guess, unlimited. If he has unlimited wealth, then I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to keep five blood samples just in case. You actually don't, I mean, I actually don't know um, what we're actually going to need. But I could, you know what? I'm actually going to buy this mace as well. And we're still gaining 65, which is really, really good. So we'll see if that actually helps us out. So we have a, uh, an alcoholic beverage now. And I'm also going to be equipping this new weapon. And uh, hopefully that's going to work out for us. Because you can see here, look at the amount of damage I'm do doing right now. 23 to 26. And you take it off. And I do 14 to 17. So this is crazy good. Crazy, crazy good. Okay. Hello there. You always admired people who can sleep while standing. Here, drink this. Give mead. The man drinks greedily. Much better. You asked what happened? Well, let's say I believe that you really care. He sinks to the ground, looking somehow even more miserable. I am a lord. He seems to realize how absurd this sounds in his current predicament, so he waves his hand and tries to start the story again. You're used to Yvain, the man who ran Kuanakt before he went on his journey. He owned this land. He owned these people. But most importantly, he owned the hearts of his followers. I was a lord too. I ruled over Donegal, a village on the cliffs south of Grubwood. It wasn't as impressive or important as Kuanakt, but the view of the sea made up for everything we lacked. So what happened? I wanted all that's best for my people. This is how they repaid me. He shakes his head. When the weirdness crept in, I asked them for help. I mean, I asked them to help our village, to pull into the coffers and donate food from their granaries, to build a foundation through the worst times. I asked them to build walls to deter the bandits bound to come once their villages were consumed. I asked them... He starts crying again. And that's how they repaid me. One morning a crowd gathered in front of my home and they told me to leave the village, threw me a sword and made me go. Somewhere, anywhere. I didn't know what I'd done wrong. I had no time to pack, no time to prepare. I lost my way in the weirdness. I don't know for how long. 
but I knew I had to come to Kuinax because it was bound to be the only safe place on this side of Avalon. Yvain wouldn't let that happen to him, ever. What happened on the road? The man starts sobbing uncontrollably. I struggled and suffered on my journey here. I fought beasts and bandits. I had no luck on my side, especially... He gets back to the drink you gave him. I'm sure you've noticed the smell. It's my curse. It's what I earned on my journey through the weirdness. I've seen many disturbing things on my way here. Talking trees, merchants merge with their carts. But when I finally arrived here, I realized that something even worse happened to me. He leans closer to you, the smell overpowering. I don't wear my clothes anymore. They wear me. Only now do you realize that his armor has fused with his flesh. Imagine the look on the bandits' faces when they tried to rob me of my possessions. I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. All the good you want to do for people, and that's how they repay you. Is there anything I can do for you? No, not really. I'll just stay here. Stay here and probably die. Leave, go, have fun on your adventures or whatever. Oh, wow. That's a pretty, that is a, that is a very heavy story. And that's the thing. The game is tagged with dark fantasy. So that's what you're going to get. Absolutely. All right. So let's take a look at the Druid's house. I believe, oh wait, this is actually the Mead Hall. So we can actually join the villagers in the Mead Hall if we so desire. And where is, where is that guy's home? Is it here? Is it, is, is it, is it, is it this home right here? All Mother Niante was there for everyone in Kuanakt, healing their wounds, helping with childbirth and schooling children. Even when the Red Priests moved in, she didn't stop her pagan practices. Now this ruined house, first robbed to the last nail that could have been used and then burned down by accident, stands as a testament to how the townsfolk decided to repay her the moment she left with Forge Master Erfir and Lord Yvain on a quest to find the Grail. Oh, wow, so they, they really did not appreciate that one bit. Okay, so you need to get back his old home. I assume it's this one. Maybe? <laughs> uh, if home is where your heart is, then Airfear's house is the closest to home you've been able to feel. And you can rest here as well, which will probably restore our HP. And if you work, you will get a weapon of bad quality. I personally don't need a weapon because I have done uh, the unspeakable and purchased the innkeeper's weapon for a very significant sum but anyway that's going to be it for this episode if you'd like to see more then by all means let me know but otherwise if you'd like to check out the game there is a link in the description it has just released into early access i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time